creative. A tech company based here in Singapore, whereby they're actually famous for their sound cards called the Sound Blaster. Some of you may have heard of it. And they actually decided to move into the realms of wireless earbuds. And they released the original Outlander Air back in February 2019. And very quickly in the same year, about three months later, they released an updated version called the Outlander Go on May 2019. Almost 20 months later, Creative actually finally released the Outlander Air V2 on November 2020 with improved battery life, better mics, and better sound. Now, even though I do not own the original Outlander Air or even the Outlander Gold, but in this video, I'm actually going to share my thoughts about the Outlander Air V2. Hi everyone, this is Johnny here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So over here, I mainly test and review budget and affordable wireless earbuds to help you to decide before you hit that buy button. So without further ado, let's get into today's content. The Creative Outlander Air V2, or I'll just call it Outlander V2 throughout this whole video, retails for around 99 Singapore dollars on the Creative website, but with sales and promotion, you should be able to get way lesser than that. I actually got mine for only 44 Singapore dollars. Now, for the past two weeks, I've actually been testing this earbuds for as my daily driver. So I'll include the timestamp down in the description below so that if you want to jump to any particular segment, you can just click on the time code. So in terms of the design and build, feel free to check out my unboxing of the Outlander V2 over here, whereby I actually give you my first impression and first look of the earbuds and then come back to this particular review video. Now, in terms of comfort and fit, as you can see here, I'm actually wearing the earbuds right now. So you can take a good look. This is a mod look of the right ear. This is a mod look of the left ear. And this is how they look like on the front view. Now, despite the huge shape and size and the weight of the earbuds, it's actually pretty comfortable to actually wear them. As the earbuds weight is pretty evenly distributed, you actually forget them after you actually wear them. Now, not only that, the earbuds actually come pre-installed with medium-sized silicon ear seal. And of course, Creative will actually provide additional different sizes. They provide like S size and L size silicon seal so that you can mix and match them to get a better seal and fit. Now, the silicon seal themselves are pretty thick which I actually like it so I'm currently pretty okay wearing the default M size. Now since the ear tip is actually pretty short so the silicon seal only goes slightly into your ear canal the fair bit of the earbud sits outside your ear and so you can see that it actually sticks out quite a fair bit. Now the good thing is that once you get the right seal and fit, once you put the earbuds on, the very first thing you will notice is the passive noise isolation. It actually gives a pretty good noise isolation. And of course, this will actually have a direct impact on the music enjoyment, which I'll actually talk about that in a little bit. Lastly, the earbuds actually do not trap heat and they don't press against any part of my ears. So I can wear them for many hours without feeling any ear fatigue or pain. Now in terms of music quality, the Outlander V2 supports SBC, AAC and APTX audio codec. Creative actually use a 5.6mm graphene coated driver diaphragm for the V2. Even though it's very small, but the audio output at 50% is actually pretty loud for such a small driver. In fact, most of the time, my volume level actually don't need to go beyond 40%. Music quality wise, the Outlander V2, I would personally actually consider them as one of the best you can actually get at this particular price point. Uh, and of course, having the right seal and fit is utmost important as well, as it will actually have a direct impact on the overall music quality and music enjoyment. The first thing I notice once I start playing the music, it's actually the bass. The bass is actually surprisingly good for such a small driver. There's actually plenty of bass, but it's never overbearing. The sub bass as well, uh, there's a lot of rumbles and kicks to it, which um, I think some of you who are actually bass lovers, you would definitely enjoy the bass you will get out from the Outlander V2. In terms of vocals and instruments, they're very clean and they're actually very bright. You can actually hear the details in the instruments as well. Soundage is very good, but the thing is that if you tend to listen to your music at very high audio levels, such as you know 80% or 90% or even at max volume, certain tracks may sound a little bit more harsh 
or sometimes there may even be a low hissing sound in the background uh, but overall at this price point i feel that you know the outlander 2 is definitely one of the best sounding wireless earbuds i've actually tested so far you can actually get at such a low price point now in terms of battery life the earbuds are actually rated to go up to 12 hours on the single charge now on my own testing i was able to get around 13.5 hours when i put my music at 80% volume, right? I mean, 13.5 hours, one, three. Whew, my God. And when it comes to phone calls, it's around 10 hours. For mixed usage, I got around 10 hours and that is actually a mixture of four hours on phone calls or maybe Zoom call and then six hours on music. Now, the V2 casing, the charging case, is actually able to provide an additional 22 hours, giving you a total usage of up to 34 hours. Right, it takes uh, about less than 16 minutes to charge the earbuds from 0 to 100. Uh, though sadly, the V2 has no quick charging feature, it also has no wireless G charging feature. Now, in terms of connectivity, the V2 utilizes Bluetooth 5.0, so I was able to get around 9 meters uh, at home. Now, the initial Bluetooth pairing with my devices doesn't matter whether it's iPhone, whether it's Android, or it's my laptop or my MacBook. It's actually a little bit tricky. The reason is being that when, um, I mean, firstly, it doesn't come with quick pairing when you slide the earbuds out from the case. Uh, you actually need to take the earbuds out in order to initiate the pairing. Um, but the, the tricky part is that the individual earbuds will actually show up on the pairing screen. But don't worry, just tap on either one of them and it will pair with both of them together. Now, after the initial pairing is done, there's actually no fixed master or slave, so you are actually able to use the individual earbuds um, for, you know, if you just want to wear one side. If you intend to actually use the earbuds for phone calls while you're actually listening to music or you're watching videos, it actually switches back and forth, you know, effortlessly. Now, in terms of touch control, Creative actually throws in Almost everything in the V2, I would say the touch commands for the V2 is very complete, including volume control. Though I would say the one downside you know, is that you can't actually, you cannot uh, customize the commands, the touch commands via the creative app. And since we're actually speaking of the creative app, it's also important to take note that the V2 has zero support. It has zero app support from the creative app. If you intend to actually bring the V2 for like workout, gymming, jogging, this kind of stuff, you'll be delighted to know that the V2 is actually IPX5 waterproof rated. So this means that the earbuds can actually take a little bit of water and sweat, right? A little bit of rain as well, okay? So you don't need to worry about them damaging, though the case itself has no proper IPX rating. So do keep the case dry. Now, in terms of microphone quality, according to Creative, it's it uses a better microphone, all right? It's an upgrade from the original Outlander Air. So I would say that in terms of when I, when I was using the earbuds indoors, the microphone quality is excellent. But once I move it outdoor, it's a little bit of a love and hate thingy. Because firstly, the Qualcomm CVC 8.0, it has different performance in different outdoor environments. Uh, take for example, if I'm walking along a busy road, it's perfectly fine, all right? The technology, the CVC, it's able to isolate my voice, press the background voice, the background noise very well so that the person on the other end can actually hear my voice clearly. But once I get into noisier places such as cafes and restaurants, it actually struggled. So the person on the other end was hearing my voice like choppy and this kind of stuff. And, and when, it, when there's wind as well, it's even worse. Without further ado, I mean, the next segment is a series of sound clips to actually showcase to you the microphone quality of the V2. Do remember to pull on your headphones. This is how your voice will sound like on the iPhone 12 mini. This is how your voice will sound like on the iPhone 12 mini. Hi everyone, this is Johnny here. I'm currently doing a microphone test on the Creative Outlander version 2. I'm currently indoors in my computer room with the windows open. Uh, so do let me know what you think of the microphone quality. Testing, testing. One, two, three.
Right, hi everyone, this is Johnny here. I'm currently in Paris and I'm walking along the main street and I'm testing the microphone on the Creative Outlander version 2. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hi everyone, this is Johnny here. I'm currently inside a coffee shop and I am doing a microphone test on the Creative Outlander version 2. So do let me know what you think of the microphone quality. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a mic test on the M1 MacBook Air built-in microphone. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a mic test on the M1 MacBook Air built-in microphone. Hi everyone, this is Johnny here. I'm currently indoors and I am doing a microphone test on the Creative Outlander Air version two. I'm doing it via Zoom. So do let me know what you think of the microphone quality. Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, so let's take a look at the pros and cons of the V2, shall we? Now on the good side, it has excellent battery life. Oh my goodness, 12 hours and 34 hours in total. Yes, very good sound quality. It's IPX5 um, waterproof rated. It has decent microphone qualities indoors, outdoors, it's on the downside, all right? Uh, and besides the downside, it doesn't have uh, active noise cancellation, it has no ANC, it has big earbuds, bulky case, there's no quick charge, no wireless Qi charging, there's no app support from Creative, and there is also the useless Super XFI. Okay, so idea of day. Are they still worth it? I mean, Johnny, you're saying so much bad things, but is it still worth it to get the Outlander Air V2? Well, if you look away from the big earbuds, the big bulky case, if you're and in my option, if you're on a budget, you are looking for a pair of wireless earbuds which literally checks most boxes and you actually don't need features like ANC or app support then in, and I feel that at under 50 US dollar, you can actually consider the Outlander Air V2 either for yourself or as a gift. All right, there you have it. This has actually been my personal review of the Creative Outlander Air V2. I hope it has helped you. If it did, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and share this video with your friends if you're looking at it. All right, my name is Johnny. That's all the time we have. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.